Welcome back. It's 11.38 in the morning. This is To The Point on GB News with me and I, Florian Iman, and Patrick Christie's. We're here live on your TV and radio this morning. Yes, indeed. Right now, on the 29th of November last year, a group of Jewish children were subjected to an anti-Semitic abuse on a bus in central London. The BBC coverage of the story was absolutely slammed by the Board of Deputies of British Jews, who complained about the alleged reporting of an Islamophobic slur on the bus. The board disputed that such a slur could be heard. A spokeswoman for the BBC has stated that the corporation will, quote, ensure that the complaints are fully responded to as swiftly as possible. The Culture Secretary Nadine Dorries has written to the broadcaster urging a satisfactory resolution. Yes, indeed. Well, let's just speak now to Natasha Hausdorff, a barrister at Six Pump Court and legal director of UK Lawyers for Israel Charitable Trust. Uh, welcome to the programme, Natasha. Thank you very, very much. Just to explain to us the latest legal goings on, last week, I thought, I think it was Friday, actually, I did a, a, an opening monologue on this story. Uh, we guested it as well. We had someone from the Jewish Chronicle on and in, uh, a couple of other people as well. So what's the legal latest then? Well, good morning, Patrick. UK Lawyers for Israel is a, a voluntary association of lawyers working to combat uh, anti-Semitism and attacks on Israel, as in this case of the BBC's reporting. And the potential claim here concerns the BBC's breach of the Equality Act by discriminating on the grounds of religion or race. Now, there were unfortunately several serious issues with the reporting. The claim by the BBC that there were racial slurs about Muslims has been resoundingly debunked by every other organization that has reviewed the footage. But it's seriously concerning that the claim of anti-Muslim racial slurs was reported as if it was undisputed fact without any qualification whatsoever. And by contrast, the real abuse, which was anti-Semitic, was only reported as the subject of allegation. Now, the uh, BBC has also reported that the incident was being looked at by the police in its entirety, which is an innuendo that an alleged anti-Muslim slur amounted to a criminal offence or in some way justified the anti-Semitic abuse. Now, sadly, this level of appalling bias at the BBC is nothing new, uh, and it's well known that the corporation has spent tens of thousands of pounds suppressing the Balin report into bias with respect to the BBC's coverage on Israel. And we've also recently seen Lord Dyson's damning report about the cover-up culture at the BBC. There are uh, some serious questions to answer here. Uh, and on top of this, there's the obfuscation uh, and lack of transparency of the complaints procedure, which is simply meaningless. Those in the Jewish community have no confidence in the BBC's complaints process, uh, or sadly in Ofcom, where appeals to Ofcom are to a content board where 10 out of the 14 members are former BBC staff. And in fact, the BBC's failure to take the steps requested of it by lawyers associated with UKLFI in relation to the reporting of this incident uh, suggests that it is banking on there being no proper investigation of its conduct in relation to this report. As well, I mean, you, you, you hit rightly on the, uh, the nail on the head there when you said about them saying, oh, allegedly this, this bunch of uh, anti-Semitic attack. Well, I mean, there's nothing allegedly about a, a Nazi salute, which is clearly visible in uh, one of those clips, for example. But, um, yeah, so what could actually happen to the BBC now? What could happen if, the, you know, if these legal complaints kind of, kind of come off? Well, if the steps requested uh, of the BBC aren't uh, carried out, and that is an investigation by a, a senior individual at the corporation, and if uh, indeed it is found uh, as a result of that in investigation that the BBC was wrong to unreservedly apologise and, and compensate those affected, uh, then there could well be a, a claim arising out of it, as I indicated, for uh, the breach. Uh, but. I think this needs to be viewed very much in the context of um, the overall impression that the Jewish community have of the BBC's bias. Uh, now, you mentioned the Nazi salutes uh, that have been reported as part of this attack. Uh, the other element uh, of the attack um, are a, a metal basket being thrown onto, lobbed onto the top deck, which was uncovered of this bus, which miraculously didn't land on any of the individuals that were there 
there, um, chants of free Palestine from uh, the racist abusers on the street, uh, and indeed the playing of uh, songs that have been identified as uh, belonging to the organization, the terrorist organization Hamas. So uh, you have here the conflagration um, of intense anti-Israel sentiment uh, and um, anti-Semitism masquerading uh, in that form. Thank you very much for bringing us an update on this anti-Semitism scandal at the BBC. Natasha Hausdorff, a barrister at Six Pump Court and legal director of UK Lawyers for Israel Charitable Trust. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Interesting, though, isn't it? They said that they uh, are banking on there not being a particularly proper um, BBC investigation, but mm. so we'll, have to, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah.